They look the same, don't they? Well, okay, sort of. Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. It is the end of the month, so that means it's time for my playlist video. This is a video I do every month in which I just talk about the music that I've listened to over the past month, just for fun, not having to do with anything else on my channel, be they the, the now and thens, or the bargain bags, or the backtracks, or any of that stuff. Just listening for listening's sake, which is something that we all need to do at some point, don't we? Just not think about critiquing the album, or what we think of it. Just, just listening to just let some good sounds into our ears. And But anyway, before I get to the actual uh, list, my actual playlist proper, I like to talk about whatever's on my mind uh, at this particular point in time. And at this particular point in time, it is fellow YouTubers. I just I went on something of a subscribing spree uh, in the last couple of weeks. I just kind of went browsing on YouTube and looked up other music YouTubers and found a handful of them, about a half a dozen, that I uh, really happen to enjoy that I think you guys might enjoy as well. The first one up is Idre Reviews, and he's been doing his thing uh, since about the first of the year. Uh, just basically does, he does the album review thing, talks about albums uh, in a variety of genres, uh, you know, current albums that is. And he's, he seems to have a good taste in music and a good handle on how to review albums. And I think he's worth a, a subscribe or at least a couple of views. Go check him out. Up next on my list is Pete's CD Vinyl World. And he started up at about the beginning of the year. Uh, just about the same time that Idre Reviews did. And he's got a kind of a nice low-key style. Uh, mostly just shows albums from his collection. Uh, gives a couple lists every now and then. And uh, reviews some classic albums. Pretty good variety of stuff on his channel. Very fun to listen to. And so, yeah, I think he's worth a subscribe. I, he was for me, anyway. Uh, and then up next is AGK's Vinyl Life. Now, this guy is uh, one of the older YouTubers out there. I mean, Pete's old enough to have a son, a uh, preteen son, but uh, AGK is, is probably a bit older than I am. At least, that's what he looks older than I am. And uh, he launched his channel about four months ago, and he covers an interesting array of topics. Uh, in one video, he talks about banned or censored album covers. In another video, he talks about Japanese album pressings. I mean, I, I actually, early on in my channel, I talked about Japanese issue CDs, so we kind of have that in common. And he also did a very interesting topic just recently about uh, the importance of CDs in an increasingly vinyl-dominated music world. So he does a lot of interesting discussion-type videos, and you know, of course, you know, shows new additions to his collection and all that stuff. So, and he's got kind of a nice laid-back style. So I, I really get a kick out of watching him. So he's excellent. So he's worth a subscribe. Up next on my list is Chris Profi, musically obsessed. That's the name of his channel. And uh, he's, he's a lot of fun, too. He's been dropping videos for about a year now, uh, but he drops a lot of them. He's got a huge number of videos. Uh, he's, I think he does three or four a week uh, from, from the looks of how, how long his list is by now. And he mostly shows, uh, kind of like AGK does, he mostly shows parts of his collection, uh, new vinyl acquisitions, top ten lists, but he also every now and then performs acoustic guitar covers of popular songs. So that's kind of an interesting thing to watch. He's, he's pretty talented in that department, I have to say. He's, he's got a good uh, good guitar style, and uh, he's got a pretty good voice as well. So he is a lot of fun to watch as well. So, And the final one on my list is Brian's Vinyl Records. Yes, I've got a lot of vinyl-centric YouTubers uh, on my list today. It's, I've, I've, I'm becoming uh, getting more into vinyl myself, so I uh, figure it was time to check out more vinyl YouTubers. But yeah, Brian, Brian has been around for about 18 months, and uh, he talks about kind of the same thing as most of these other YouTubers, additions to his vinyl collection, uh, does some fun little lists every now and then, as well as tips about record care, and uh, you know, caring for your vinyl records, your collection, all that other stuff. So he's uh, fun, he's got some uh, great knowledge to share, and is a lot of, uh, he's a lot of fun, like I just said a second ago. So yeah, give, them, uh, give all these YouTubers uh, a look-see if you've got a minute. Uh, th th they're worth your time, in my opinion. And uh, But now, before uh, one more thing before I get onto my list is to give a shout-out to a YouTuber. I don't know if I've ever mentioned him before. No, actually, I have mentioned him before. It was a while ago. Channel 33 RPM. Uh, it's a guy named Frank who lives up in Winnipeg, Canada. He's got a great, great YouTube channel, by the way. But uh, I'm giving him a shout-out because... Uh, he does a, a monthly feature on his channel called Vinyl Dens, where uh, people send in pictures of their music rooms and whatnot, and he gets to, you know, 
give his audience a little voyeuristic thrill by showing them other people's music rooms, giving them inspiration and whatnot. And in the most recent video, just a couple of days ago, he showed my music room. So yes, I've got my little 15 minutes of fame on Frank's channel, Channel 33 RPM. So go check out Vinyl Den's Episode 5. Uh, I'm in there. I'm, he actually made me the first one on the video, so it was a lot of fun. I loved showing him my music room, and it, it's, it gave me a little thrill to see that, uh, you know, lots of people around the, around the vinyl YouTube sphere, or whatever you call it, uh, have gotten to take a look at my little, my little slice of heaven here. So, but now, on to my playlist proper, and I've got a, a pretty even mixture of vinyl and CDs uh, this month that I've uh, spun uh, here and there, as it, mostly as I'm working from home. Uh, the first trio of albums is all by Air Supply. Yes, they, they may be a uh, kitschy or cheesy band nowadays, but uh, hey, as I say, life's too short to be a music snob, and these are guys are a not-so-guilty pleasure of mine. Uh, being from the 80s, of course, I, uh, I grew up listening to these guys' uh, albums. Uh, now and Forever, and the one I just showed you was the one that you love, as well as Lost in Love, which actually, this one just recently celebrated an anniversary. I showed it off in one of my Backtracks videos. But yeah, this is like a their trilogy. I think these were all back-to-back -back albums, uh, with uh, probably... Um, uh, spread over these three albums their most popular singles uh, in their entire career so good stuff uh, if you're in the mood for love songs check out air supply they're they're fun to listen to hey what can i say and then on to a couple of uh, 80s albums of different stripes we have david bowie and his album let's dance uh, yes i picked this one up and of course let's dance is probably his most successful single chart wise but it's also in a way his most undavid bowie like song so Go figure, you know. Uh, but you can't, or you can't uh, debate the uh, irresistibility of that song as well as China Girl. That's also on this album. So yeah, a fun album. It's uh, if you're exploring David Bowie, but you haven't checked out that album, be warned. It's one of the least David Bowie-like albums in his discography, assuming that's possible because he was kind of a musical chameleon in a lot of ways. But yeah, a fun album. What can I say? And then another uh, '80s highlight, and this, another kind of like David Bowie with his single "Let's Dance." The title track from this album, Give Me the Night, was one of the least George Benson-like singles of his entire career, and yet it was, I think, his biggest chart hit as well. So, kind of a common thread between these two albums. But yeah, that was what... Give Me the Night is one of my absolute favorite songs from the 80s ever. And uh, this album was pretty good. Uh, George Benson is mostly, historically, he has been an instrumental artist primarily, but this vo um, album featured a lot of his own vocals. He did a lot of vocal songs on this album, but still. His guitar work, though, unmistakable and fantastic, as good as it's ever been on Giving the Night. And then an absolute classic, which I will shamefully admit I had never listened to until just this past month. Rumors by Fleetwood Mac. Yes, chastise me if you will. But hey, hey there are so many albums out there. How can, you get, how can you have gotten to every one by now, honestly? Even when you're almost 50 years old. But anyway... What can you say that hasn't been said about this album? Fantastic, an absolute classic, and uh, I'm only sorry that it took me so long to get around listening to it. Amazing. It needs no introduction, it needs no critique, it's just amazing. Uh, one that's uh, probably not the best example of this artist's discography is Elton John, Victim of Love. In my opinion, no Elton John album is a horrible album, but this one is probably the least impressive of his albums. But honestly, it's still good. And it's from the, is it the 80s? No, 79. And so, yeah, a 1970s cover of Johnny Be Good, the uh, uh, Chuck Berry song. Yeah, kind of questionable, but hey, as I said, it's Elton John. And then we have uh, a couple of folk albums. We have the debut, I believe it's uh, the self-titled album, I believe it's the debut album by Peter, Paul, and Mary, the folk trio. And in a way, kind of like Air Supply, these this trio was kind of a the, the butt of some jokes, you know. Uh, not so guilty pleasure, obviously, but yeah, uh, this does not have Puff the Magic Dragon on it, which is probably their biggest uh, hit, but it has 500 Miles, um, Lemon Tree, which is a classic folk song, If I Had a Hammer, Where Have All the Flowers Gone, so. But Peter, Paul, and Mary, despite being kind of cheesy and looked at, uh, you know, with uh, disdain, I don't know if disdain is the right word, but, uh, you know, they were excellent at what they did, honestly. And then, uh, speaking of Peter, Paul, and Mary, uh, Peter Yarrow's solo album 
and this was actually on the freebie shelf at House of Records, and uh, Mary's solo album was there also, but it was in really, really awful condition. I didn't pick it up. I kind of wanted to, but I did not see uh, Paul's, uh, uh, John Paul Stuckey, I think that is his name, his solo album there. So I'm, I'm kind of hoping at some point I'll have a matching set of all three. So, But for now, I only have Peter's solo album. So good stuff on this album. Uh, what was on this album? It does not have the track listing even in the gatefold or on the back cover. So, But anyway, and now on to the little stack of CDs. First one, yes, a couple of, again, classic albums that I had not listened to until I played these CDs. And yes, it, it took them being freebies on the House of Records freebie shelf for me to actually pick them up and listen to them. You're welcome to reach through your computer screen and slap me in the face. Honestly, I deserve it. Uh, first one is Paranoid by Black Sabbath. This is a freaking amazing album. It, in a lot of ways, it was worth the wait. This is another one of those albums, kind of like uh, Rumors by Fleetwood Mac. You don't really have to talk about it. It's just, it's, its reputation precedes it. It's a fantastic album. If you've never checked out Black Sabbath, I would recommend starting with Paranoid. It's a fantastic album. And then In Through the Outdoor, the final album by Led Zeppelin. I had never heard this one. Uh, so it's, it's, it's another great album. Uh, this is the second full studio album of Led Zeppelin that I've heard. And it's I am not going to stop here. Uh, I my first one was uh, Houses of the Holy, which was fantastic, obviously, and this one was just just as great. And so yeah. And then next up, uh, this one I had never heard of before. It is Shannon McNally, and her debut album Jukebox Sparrows. Uh, this was another one in the freebie shelf. Now, so records also, actually most of these were from the freebie shelf. And yeah, she is a uh, kind of a folk pop sort of thing, of uh, Suzanne Vega ish. Uh, not quite as country pop rock as Cheryl Crow is, but to kind of Suzanne Vega, maybe Indigo Girls. It's not totally fantastic. It doesn't. It isn't wowing me, at least not yet. But I'm going to listen to it a few more times before I pass a final judgment on it. I, I enjoyed it. It was worth my time. And then we have uh, this one has an interesting story of mine behind it. Kind of uh, Ola Bell. This is their debut self-titled album. And this, uh, these guys are kind of a roots folk pop sort of thing. I guess that's the best way. Kind of an Americana sort of thing. And what's interesting about this album is they have a lot of uh, traditional spirituals on here as their um, uh, subject matter of choice. And it's it's interesting because it's it's on a major label album. It's it's a Columbia album. It's on a major label. So, but yeah, it was interesting. And I had actually owned this CD before. Not this exact copy of the CD, but uh, I I had it before. But, and I think it was the religious uh, context of the, or the religious lyrics in the uh, traditional spirituals on this album that kind of uh, repelled me from it and made me trade it in and whatnot. But I saw it there in the freebie stack and I thought, hmm, I'm going to give it one more try. And honestly, I, I, I re really kind of like it. I'm, I'm going to give it uh, some more listens, obviously. And it may end up staying in my collection for quite a bit longer this time. And then we have uh, another group that I've had some experience with, not a whole lot, uh, Jamiroquai. They are a kind of a, they're a British uh, kind of a funk rock group, sort of funk R&B, basically. My first exposure to them was a more, uh, one of their recent albums, Rock Dust Light Star, which I eventually got tired of and got rid of, traded in. And then uh, during Skip's Going Out of Business Sale, I picked up their um, Greatest Hits album. Liked it, but eventually, yeah, that one uh, also fell victim, victim to one of my CD purges. But then I thought, hey, give them one more time, one more try. So then this one was in the freebie stack, and I picked it up. And I actually really kind of like it. Uh, the third time may be the charm with these guys. Um, yeah, check out Jamiroquai if you kind of like the funk R&B kind of stuff. It accentuates the danceability of it. So it's kind of dance-worthy music more often than not. So yeah, give a try to Jamiroquai. No rhyme intended. And then we have uh, the debut album by Broken Bells. Uh, and again, this was a group that I think I had picked up their sophomore album. This is their debut, their self-titled debut. I picked up their sophomore album at one point, listened to it, didn't think much of it, traded it in. It seems to be a recurring theme with me, doesn't it? But yeah, this one, I kind of like. Uh, these. Uh, this one didn't quite grab me, uh, kind of like uh, Shannon McNally didn't. But I'm definitely going to give it a few more listens to see if it... Uh, Really, if it takes this time, and um, if it does, I may end up going uh, going after their sophomore album again, picking it up. So, and then these last two CDs are were courtesy of a very close friend of mine who was uh, purging his own CD collection and offered me up, uh, you know, sent me pictures of what he was giving away and let me take my pick of the ones that I wanted. 
And so I've got these two th with, uh, thanks to him, so incredibly generous, this friend of mine. Anyway, uh, the first one is a live album by Kenny Loggins, uh, Outside from the Redwoods. Very enjoyable album. This is kind of a playlist of his most popular songs, mostly. Uh, but yes, yeah, it's, it's in a live setting, obviously, out, outdoors. Very, very nice, very pleasant to listen to. Wonderful album. And um, Michael McDonald actually duets on his rendition of What a Fool Believes, so that's kind of an extra treat on there. And Shanice, a soul singer, um, duets on two albums. So it's, in a way, it's kind of a, a low-level, star-studded uh, live album. So, yeah, very, very enjoyable. And then the final CD I'm going to show you today is uh, the second one from my very, very generous and uh, good-hearted friend. It is Musical Chairs, the third album by Hootie and the Blowfish. And I got uh, Hootie and the Blowfish's first album, as well as their most recent album, Imperfect Circle. And I, I really enjoy it. I mean, their first album was an absolute classic, Crack Review, fantastic album. And I, I liked their most recent one. Uh, not totally loved it, but I, I kind of liked it enough. And I got uh, also got their sophomore album. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. And so this is their third album. So I'm kind of um, soft committed to uh, basically collecting the whole rest of their discography, I guess, at this point. And knowing me, that's going to happen eventually. But uh, yeah, this was a good album, better than I remembered it to be. Uh, it was I struggled to remember any of the songs at all after listening to it back when it first came out. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm more fond of uh, Hootie and the Blowfish's sound I guess, nowadays than I was back in the day, you know, 20 years ago. So yeah, a good addition to my collection there, a very worthy addition to my collection. So anyway, just like that, that'll do it for my playlist for the month of June 2020. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.